Streaming continues to dominate Hollywood with Netflix, Max, and Apple TV Plus bringing home a majority of Emmy wins behind FX. Joining us right now to talk streaming and much more is actor, writer, and producer Mark Duplass. His latest independent series, Penelope, debuts on Netflix next week. Of course, he also plays Chip on the morning show on Apple TV Plus, which is a character we know and love well. Uh, Mark, thank you for coming. I feel like today. we know you. I know Thanks. we do. It's, a, it's a weird me. thing. Like, Listen, I've been shadowing you guys for years, just ripping off all your great stories. You know, that's me. Uh, ripping you know, off the, a few better. The, the egomania <laughs> that is the, it, it combined with insecurity that it's, is it's, talent. It's right? a fascinating world to be able to play. I, you know, I've, I've been producing independent films for years. I started off. You know, making three dollar movies in my kitchen with my brother, and um, I know the stress of having to wrangle talent. But once I realized that, you know, the morning show, you have this extra live element. Um, that was really fun to be able to bring the chip in that character. Yeah, it's, it's really yeah. fun here every day too. Cool. But why don't we talk about what you're working on right now? And that is Penelope. This is uh, something you produced independently, mm -hmm. but now you brought it to Netflix, and that's a yep. different sort of um, way about going about things. Yeah. First of all, what is Penelope, and why did you do it this way? So Penelope is a story of a, of a 16 year old girl um, who's feeling a little lost and leaves behind the trappings of modern society and her technology um, to abscond into the woods. Um, it's something I wrote during the pandemic. It's something I felt uh, was deeply important for the culture. Uh, I think I have two daughters. I want them to see role models that aren't doing what just happens on Euphoria, which is a show that I love, um, but I wanted them to be able to see something else. Um, and what we're seeing in the business right now, unfortunately, is the death of the streaming wars, okay? We've got companies like Netflix and Apple and HBO. They all went to war with each other, and they thought, I'll just beat them out, and I'll emerge victorious. But they made too much stuff. They spent too much money. They're not profitable. And now they are freaking out. Mm -hmm. So the answer to that is to make homogenized content that feels like the last thing that was successful. You ever look on your streaming services, and you're like, wait, this is another like murder show with Nicole Kidman that's ripped from the hell. Like they all blend <laughs> but, in together. But that together. was what the movie business was for a while. That's exactly right. streaming. And streaming and changed it. And I'm really glad you brought that up with the movie business because I did come up in independent film yeah. and something beautiful happened in the 90s which was things were becoming homogenized there. And so people were forced to go into the independent sector. And then from there they got basically independent financiers and a whole ecosystem sprung up around Sundance. You'd make these incredibly interesting movies like In the Bedroom for $2 million. They would go make $50 million at the box office. It was good for the culture and it was great for business. So I am here basically trying to tell these dying streamers, look guys, we can do what happened in independent film. We can do that in television. I just have to be willing to lose my shirt in the process in order to do it. I have to take the money I make on the morning show go out and make a little bit more outlier art like Penelope and bring that to them and say, listen guys, I think this can really work. And we're seeing the data here. Like, look at the Emmys. Baby Reindeer won some of the most awards. It's a small show with no stars that's auteur driven. So I'm trying to really encourage people to say, this is not just good content, this is good business. Who finances it? Who, who looks at that and say, okay, that's something I'm willing to take? I have a bevy of ways that I do it, but I have always come up betting on myself. So for Penelope, I financed it completely myself. But I'm doing that right now because I have to blaze the trail. And you know, I might be like that, that early painter who, who dies of scurvy penniless because he blazed the trail, you know? But I'm hoping that we can start something exciting here, you know? And to me, I'm talking to the independent film financiers who've watched that business die and saying, come over and finance TV. Guess what? Not only do you get the initial return on your investment, if we make more seasons, you're gonna have an EP credit and an EP fee. So you get this huge tail. It's like having dividends on your stocks, you know? So I'm kind of at the beginning of this, this big effort. I mean, it should be the golden age. It, it really should for, for content. And, and streaming just gives you an opportunity to, to have more people be able to air your content. I don't know, I don't know where we went wrong. Well, it's, it's fear-based, right? And I think that if you look at any business model, not just you know, the entertainment business, um, once they realize that the subscriptions are coming down, they start to bet on the things that were successful yesterday. You know? right. And there's this great... Sequel. That's, that's exactly right. And, and there's this great metaphor that I somebody heard, and I wish I could attribute it to them, but, you know, it, oh, I think it was Wayne Gretzky where he said, 
I don't go where the puck is, oh, yeah, I go where the, the puck's the, going, right? Right, right? And that's what I think we need to see a little bit more of that. Um, but at the same time, I'm pragmatic. Like, I don't want to have to walk into Netflix, who I've known for years and all my friends, and say, you should spend all your money on this small show about a girl who runs off into the woods. You know, mm -hmm. what I want to do is make it an easy yes for them. I want to make it cheaply. I want to share my profits with my start, main creative yeah. collaborators and live to fight another day. So I'm trying to make this an easy yes. I mean, business and, and art, by definition, are, are strange bedfellows. And GE, GE for a while, owned mm -hmm. N NBC Universal. Yeah. So these guys at GE were watching movie budgets being presented to them and go over budget. Right. And they had no idea. And they, they were so uncomfortable yeah. with that business. And it, but if you think about it, that's sort of just the way it is, is it? Do you ever, do you I, ever see? I, I'm encouraging more healthy commingling of, of business and art. I have two very well, that's uh, why strange they do, parts of my brain. That's where I, they, they do Game of Thrones, too, because right. they, they want to try and do something that, that they know is going to work. But if you true. bring it to them and it doesn't cost them money, they don't lose that's money on the, the key proposition. To, yep. That's the key to the business model. You know, and again, I, 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 you know, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I think you have to make it an easy yes for them, because these executives, they have to keep their jobs, you know? So I don't go in there yelling at him, why aren't you making this? I, mean, I go in there and say, I'm going to come in. This is the same thing that Jason Blum told us last week when he was Jason here. Blum is a friend of mine, yeah. and he did a really good job in the horror business with that. And he's really built an empire that is incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really have aspirations for Jason because, to me, you know, the creative element of this uh, at its core is, is who I am. But I have learned over the years that unless I am thoughtful about the business model, um, I'm not going to get to make my stuff.